NGO training on resource mobilization done by capacity building Tanzania organization. Uh, the session starts by us trying to know who you are, what you do, and why you applied for this for this training. We also would like to ask you a question which you have to keep at the back of your mind as we go through this uh, training. And this question is, what starts first, strategy, program, or project write-up? Keep this question at the back of your mind because the answer will be used throughout the uh, training. Uh, so uh, keep your answer and uh, stay listening to, to know what comes first among these issues. Um, since the subject is resource mobilization, we start by giving a very lay definition of resource mobilization. Um, we say resource mobilization is a process of getting resources from a resource provider or various resource providers using different mechanisms so as to have resources to implement the organizational goal. The resources here also include and i repeat include financial resources a process which is called fundraising and the other resources which are human resources uh, which are material including human resources physical resources other resources are intangible others are tangible they are man-made resources and they are natural resources that that occur naturally um what is a resource uh, a resource is anything that can solve a certain problem. Therefore, resources are fixed or movable. So you may think of uh, some movable resources that are, you have around you. Other resources are man-made. These may include skills, buildings, and equipment. But uh, you may also think of other man-made uh, resources that you have or around you. Uh, it should be understood that there are many resources among them material human and time it should be emphasized that time is also a very big resource that most of us do not really consider in our planning um i said earlier uh, because most of us uh ngos and civil societies in tanzania and uh world over um very much need the financial resources in terms of uh, implementing our projects uh, and our programs, it is important to understand that uh, the process of uh, getting resources which are related to funds are, is called uh, fundraising. Fundraising only uh, talks about resources that are related to funds. Therefore, most of the, the resource mobilization which is done by uh, civil society and NGOs in Tanzania and uh, across the world is uh, financial resource mobilization, in other terms, fundraising. Uh, and we also talk about the reasons why we fundraise. We fundraise because we want to have resources to manage our programs. And we fundraise because in most cases, we don't have uh, resources to use to implement our programs. Or sometimes we fundraise because we don't have direct support for our programs from the beneficiaries or partners. Um, therefore, what are the requirements for us to be uh, fruitful in fundraising? The first uh, requirement is qualified and skilled human resources. It is important that we have skilled and qualified resource, uh, human resources who can fundraise. We need to have marketable plans and programs which are written in a manner that they compel the giver to give. We should have capable fundraisers, people who have mastered the skill of fundraising and can reach out to the, uh, to, to the various uh, donors, various givers or potential givers and compel them to give. Uh, the organization should also have uh, uh, a track record of accomplishments or focus. What we're trying to say here is that the organization should be able to show that it has done so much work with the money that has been given in the past, such that giving it money this time would also bring about good results. Or else it has to show that it has a good plan of which it is given, if it's given the money, it will be able to use the uh, to be able to use this money in a good manner. Preamble. 
Uh, it should be uh, clear that uh, the author uh, focuses basically on Tanzanian NGOs um, and his, uh, his work is taken on uh, uh, attaining resources which are in Tanzania. However, the ideas that have been given by the author in this training are not a magic bullet. Uh, they need to have various ways combined together to have uh, or to achieve resource mobilization. Um, and it should be emphasized that uh, the uh, resource mobilization being talked about by the uh, resource, uh, by the trainer here, uh, are those resources that are based on the Tanzanian concept. Con concept. Uh, but uh, the trainer also borrows concepts and tips from various gurus on resource mobilization from within Tanzania, from uh, various parts of Africa and globally. So uh, it is a rich uh, resource on uh, resource mobilization that we fuse in the uh, thinking of various gurus in the on this subject. Uh, the trainer also gives a distinction, as I said earlier on, between um, resource mobilization and fundraising. As you may know, it's very confusing for NGOs to see the distinction, but uh, the author has made a very clear distinction on the two. And this is based on Richard Holloway's 2011 distinction of the two concepts. But you should also be understood that uh, resource mobilization is a bigger than fundraising and fundraising is a subset of resource mobilization. Uh, the trainer also explains various forms of resource mobilization and explains how planned actions in identifying collection and utilization of both foreign and local resources for the achievement of national go, mission, go and mission is done. Uh, it is also important from the uh, trainer's perspective that organizations should have knowledge about the strategies that are used in resource mobilization and that the, the NGOs or uh, organizations must ensure accountability to the stakeholders, to the government, to the beneficiaries, to other actors, to peer NGOs that they work with and to the society as a whole for them to be seen as credible and to be given resources in future. Um, it also, we also explain in this training a very important concept which is about the relationship between the state, the business sector and the CSOs. This is because CSOs operate in a country or in a state where there are these three actors and it is important to have a very good understanding of the roles played by each of these actors uh, in the state and therefore um, NGOs need to understand uh, the trainer also explains the relation between the three actors in the modern political economy uh, which are the state, uh, the private sector, business sector, the civil society or the state sector or the people sector. Uh, it is important to understand this because uh, most often um, NGOs play roles which are not their roles and uh, the government might play roles or not of private sector but let's not that brings about confusion on how the uh, the three actors uh, relate therefore brings about uh, mistrust among the three actors therefore uh, it is important for NGOs to understand the role that they're supposed to play in the modern political economy as they fundraise the author or trainer also gives a gist on how local NGOs can use foreign gotten resources to build self-reliance and sustainability because very often um, NGOs use or deplete all the resources given by the donors without thinking about tomorrow yet there is tomorrow and they need to have tomorrow so NGOs should uh, deliberate with their resource givers or resource providers about how they can use their resources in building sustainability. Further, the trainer uh, ages the NGOs to be very mindful about the human resource because the human resource is the heart of the organization and that it is a human resource that mobilizes and manages other resources. 
Therefore, human resources should be treated tenderly and carefully. Uh, tenderly and very carefully. The, 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 the trainer also uh, tries to fuse in various concepts on organization development from uh, renowned gurus who have done resource, who have done organization development and have worked on the issue of resource mobilization. The gurus are local, others are regional, others are international. Therefore, the evidence provided herein is proven evidence of what has worked nationally, regionally, and uh, globally. As has been said earlier on, the first question was, what comes first, the program, the project, or the, uh, the, the idea? Um, it should be understood here that what comes first in any project or in any planning, in any fundraising, should be the problem. There's need to identify a problem, a genuine problem which is, uh, a genuine problem which is affecting the uh, civil society, uh, in the region, uh, in the um, country, or uh, in the in the society, therefore we form organizations or angels based on these problems. We have international organizations which are formed to solve problems that are international in nature. We've got local NGOs, which are uh, we've got regional NGOs, which are formed to solve uh, problems which are which are problems which are regional in nature, and we have local NGOs which are base place to solve problems which are national in nature and sub-national in nature. Therefore, uh, the problem should come first before any intervention because if you start by the intervention, it's like the answer looking for a question. Uh, therefore, uh, we should start by asking the question which is a problem, then look for an answer. And if we start with the project, it is like trying to justify the existence of a project by getting by getting a problem. Therefore, it is important that we first articulate a problem which is uh, uh, rooted in the society, not just any hypothetical problem. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we should understand that um, only a fool, a foolish person, goes looking for a problem because in the ideal situation, problems come looking for us. Therefore, we should address problems which are rooted in the society, as I have said earlier. Um, however, there are also challenges that are attended to, uh, to uh, resource mobilization and fundraising in Tanzania. These were identified in the 2017 uh, verification of NGOs by the National Council of NGOs, the Ministry responsible for NGOs. The first were a set of uh, challenges associated with external forces. These are externally uh, laid uh, challenges. The first one was donor priorities. The changing donor priorities. When the donor governments change, their priorities change. Therefore, the uh, areas to which the donors give also change. The other thing is the uh, demands. The stringent demands that donors have in terms of systems, procedures, and the sophisticated way of writing proposals. Nowadays, they have what they call pitching, which is also a new way. So this also presents a, a challenge to uh, a lot of NGOs. The other one is donor conditionality. The uh, pointing of the donors to certain issues that NGOs should work on for them to get their funding. Therefore, this also presents a challenge. The other one is political interference. The other one is general prejudice that NGOs that work with the government or work uh, in partnership with the government are government laid and therefore are uh, told in the government line, therefore cannot be objective. Um, the other one is competition. Competition among us, NGOs and uh, CSOs themselves. Um, this one is also a challenge, which is external. The other challenge is uh, the type of networks that these NGOs are members to. The networks, which most of the times get the resources and subgrant, have various conditionalities on which the members of the networks uh, have have to do for them to access the funds. Uh, the other set of challenges are external. The external challenges include limited capacity, poor accountability, 
and lack of transparency. The other challenge that's been found in Tanzania has been donor syndrome. The do uh, founder syndrome. You find that the founders of the organization keep on to the organization even when chairs have times have changed and the, their skills or uh, contribution is no longer relevant to the organization. The other one is inadequate strategic planning and operational planning skills among NGOs. The other one is about low or inadequate understanding of fundraising opportunities that exist in the NGO world and the changing opportunities, the changing focus of uh, the givers or the donors. The other challenge is government issues. Uh, the intelligence is governance issues. Uh, how do NGOs, CSOs govern themselves? How are they seen by the, uh, by, by the society as having a good governance sense? The other one is communication and branding. Most CSOs and uh, NGOs in Tanzania have very low branding or self-publicity uh, uh, skills. Uh, so this also hinges on, hinders on the, uh, the way they resource mobilize because they're not known and their good work is kept in the shows and known to only themselves. It is also important to understand what motivates the donors or what makes the donors give to organizations. The first fact is good work, the good work that the organization does. The second is because these NGOs or organizations do better than other organizations. The third fact is honest and responsibility because these organizations are honest and responsible and can deliver results based on the finances that are given or the other resources that are given. Uh, they also give because these organizations are attractive and persuasive. They have a cause or reason that compels the giver to give. They also appeal to the interest of the donor. What does the donor want? What does the donor stand for? And what does it give? So they appeal to the uh, interest of the donor. And donors also support organizations which are useful and beneficial to the donor and to the community. Therefore, you have to show that you are useful to the community and beneficial to the donor for it to be given. They also give to organizations that further missions of the donor, that support the mission and the stand of the donor. Therefore, you should understand what kind of donor you're working with and what are their mission, what is their vision, and what is their objective for being donors. Uh, they also give because they are asked and persuaded to give. Therefore, angels should have the skills to persuade the donors to give. Um, other issues that angels should look at when they go resource mobilizing or they, all, they go fundraising are that they have to behave business-like. I know a lot of NGOs being taught to behave business like they feel very bad. But what's wrong is what is bad about business like? Business like is simply being professional, efficient, hardworking, and competent. Therefore, NGOs should emulate these skills of business people uh, and leave the other profit uh, monger kind of uh, <laughs> traits and characteristics. So, NGOs have to be business like if they're going to be, be successful in fundraising. In fundraising. Um, they also have to understand the categories and strategies in resource mobilization. There are conventionally 11 strategies for resource mobilization and three categories. These have been explained at length in this training but for now we are going to skip them and go to the, uh, to the proposal writing which is an element which is needed in all of the 11 strategies and three categories of uh, resource mobilization. And after that, we'll have a session which will basically dwell on the uh, strategies of resource mobilization, which are foundations, individual philanthropy, uh, building grassroots citizens organization, public resource, uh, getting resources public, resource mobilization from development assistance, uh, in, uh, engaging corporations, incomes aimed from trade and exchange, date convention, 
building indigenous foundations, establish microfinance programs, tapping into social investments and markets. And a brief of this has been given in a letter, uh, in later session. Um, before we even think about writing a proposal or engaging in resource mobilization or, resource or fundraising, it is important for an organization to understand that it has good programs and systems in place, procedures in place. Uh, this is because sometimes, most of the time, NGOs go to length, write a good proposal which passes the donors, the donors are happy with it, but they often fail at the due diligence when the donors come to find out the capacity of the NGO to implement the program. Therefore, even before you waste time uh, writing a, resource, uh, a, a, a proposal or uh, doing fundraising, it is important for you to see that your house is in order, you have the good systems, procedures, and uh, mechanisms in place. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We have now reached the stage of proposal writing, and it's important that you follow through on proposal writing. Now, uh, what about the proposal? A proposal is an essential marketing document that helps cultivate an initial professional relationship with the with an organization and the donor over a project to be implemented. Meaning that you have to write a good proposal because it is the first impression and the first item that creates the uh, the, uh, the the relationship between you and the uh, donor. The donor most of the time doesn't know about the organization, but by reading the proposal, they, they find out whether the organization is capable of doing things. Uh, the proposal is an outline plan of the implementation of the organization about the project, gives uh, extensive information about the intention for implementing of the organization's activity, which they're finding, asking for funds for, and the results that should be delivered as a, as a result of the project. So it is important for the organization to be very tactful, very careful when uh, drawing a proposal. In some cases, a concept note is needed. It is basically a brief of the project. It is uh, a summary of the project that has to be very concise uh, when it's written. However, the project idea faces considerable challenges when it has to be presented in a framework. Most of the times we talked about the problem area, we might have the understanding of the problem we have to solve, as said earlier. But the point is that when you now have to frame the uh, problem in terms of the uh, framework context of a proposal, there are various challenges. Because proposals have various uh, formats and various ways of doing, various donors have various formats of uh, writing proposals. But however, uh, there are certain elements in each proposal uh, that even if whichever donor, whatever format, there are elements in the proposal that are the same. So it is up to an organization to master the elements in the proposal that are basically the uh, conventional proposal elements so that they can be able to write a proposal of any format from any donor. Uh, in current times, proposals have become sophisticated. Yes, you have proposal writers who are basically trained proposal writers and they end the living through proposal writing, supporting various organizations. Mostly the big organizations do proposals. But we have uh, in uh, most of the uh, Tanzanian NGOs, novice writers of proposals. Therefore, uh, it is important that an organization which is supposed to write a proposal uh, very much also becomes oriented to proposal writing or they choose one person in the organization that will be one, two, three people in the organization that are going to be uh, dedicated to proposal writing. So they have to master the skills of proposal writing because it has become highly competitive. And we have such new notions now in proposal writing as pitching. Pitching, which is... Uh, Basically, you do a proposal in a very brief uh, sense and present it in PowerPoint presentation and sometimes in a video form to explain the proposal. Even before you write the big proposal, this has to go. Uh, why is it important to write a proposal? A writing proposal is important because it makes the uh, donor, other people understand what you want to do. Because without a proposal, nobody will know whatever you want to do, will not even know you if you don't have a proposal writing. Um, and the other thing that is very important about proposal writing is that 
donors and uh, givers of money believe in written documents more than oral speech so you have to write a proposal a proposal is important because it helps planning activities and making budgets uh, if you have a good written proposal it's easy to plan the activities uh, sequence of activities and ensure that the budgets are in line with the activities and the planned outcomes and uh, outputs uh, the proposal is important because it also reflects the organization's competitiveness as you may know the proposal world has become very competitive therefore organizations that uh, write proposals have to be competitive so it shows uh, whether you have the ability by the written by in written terms to implement a project that you should implement therefore a proposal is very important for competitiveness purposes uh, for competitiveness purposes um, a proposal has also inherent challenges. The first challenge is the fear of rejection. Most organizations don't write proposals because they're afraid that they'll be rejected when they've done so much time. Therefore, it is important for the writer of a proposal to deal with the fear factor before starting writing a proposal. Therefore, for, for them to focus and have a corrigible proposal, they need to deal with the fear. Are tight deadlines. Uh, a lot of organizations in Tanzania and all over the world have been seen to be waiting at the end of the uh, proposal deadline. That's when they're fighting with the deadlines and making the proposal, writing the proposal to make the deadline. However, it is important for an organization to do a proposal immediately when the uh, announcement has been made so that they can make remedial changes, read through, read through, and then read through again before the proposal is submitted other than uh, uh, chasing deadlines. Uh, the other thing is planning pro pro problems with the uh, proposal. A lot of organizations face program, uh, planning programs with proposal in that um, most of the times uh, the proposal is actually written against uh, 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 with a few people and uh, most of the times uh, they don't have uh, the actual problem that they want to solve. Therefore, they they write a proposal which addresses the symptoms or or, or the uh, side effects of the problem which makes it difficult for them to be funded when the funder goes through sees that this is not the actual problem but it is the outcome of the project of, of the of the problem being said so it is important for organizations to understand the problem and really uh, identify the actual problem uh, and not the causes not uh, not the not, not the causes or, and not the outcomes of the problem they have to understand the actual problem and work on the program uh, problem confusion and format uh, a lot of organizations have uh, donors have various formats as i said earlier on and this confuses a lot of Tanzanian angels but i said as i said earlier on it is very important to master the uh, to master the uh, format which is uh, which is conventional therefore they can write any proposal it's a matter of uh, uh, putting in uh, the proposal in uh, in the format that the donor wants because there are some things that are com conventionally common among all proposals uh, proposals um therefore organization of all sizes formations and types have to do the following before embarking on a proposal interview with the past pro past and perspective beneficiaries you have to talk with the beneficiary of the project to see uh what conditions favor the project and if the project is really desired by the uh, beneficiaries in the project area review past project proposals you have to read your past project proposal you've written on the subject and other people have written on the subject which one have won uh, grants and which one have not won grants you also talk to donors to find out uh what kind of proposals in that specific area have been uh, successful you review past you review and evaluate your reports it is important to review your reports to find out what information you have on the kind of proposal you are doing so as to avoid mistakes so as to see what has worked in the past in terms of uh, addressing the problem that hand and that if you written other proposals what have been the mistakes and what have been the success factors so it is important to reread your reports and uh, refocus your reports organize uh, focus group discussions you have to have these 
uh, focus group discussions with actors that are concerned with the issue that your proposal is uh, trying to address. You might have uh, actors like uh, experts, you could have uh, actual affected people, you should have people who have implemented this kind of project and people who work as who associate with the donor and understand the donor thinking about the issue. You should do a statistic uh, data search. This is about uh, you doing data analysis and for Tanzania mostly we use uh, very, uh, verifiable data, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, verifiable data or empirical data produced by the National Bureau of Statistics and other established uh, other established statistics uh, collectors and we, even society we look at expert organizations who have done research on the subject and the research has gone through the uh, uh, national the, the, the Commission for Science and Technology which is uh, a mark that has been with the responsibility of uh, checking the research and ensuring that the research has been done in a proper manner. So therefore you should do statistical change and data check based on this. Consult experts as earlier is very important on the subject. Conduct surveys, gather primary information by surveys. Most of the times the first activity in the project might be a data uh, surveys or conducting a mapping of a mapping uh, exercise uh, to see how what information exists on the subject but you can do this before even before you send in the proposal uh, if, uh, if there, there's some simple ways of gathering information which won't need so much money hold community meetings and forums you can hold community meetings and forums uh, to discuss the uh, issue at hand to discuss the issue at hand so that uh, the community can understand what you're doing they can give you information on what you need to have uh, in the in the proposal what are some of the uh, terms used in the proposal writing indicator these elements of the pro of the project plan these are these are elements of project plan that translate the project's purpose and results into measurable units quality and quantity and that and thus provide a basis for measuring the impact inputs the investment of resources human uh, material financial invested in the project output the results achieved activity plan a description of flow time and responsibility for the project activities um, resource plan a description of how the resources will be used in relation to the activities Gantt chart a specific model for activity plans and illustrates how the activities are interconnected income <clears throat> the funds secured for the project implementation um, what are other consideration in uh, planning and the steps you take in planning for a uh, project proposal identify the the goals, objectives, results expected, uh, and the target group. Uh, the background of the project define, defines goals and objectives and societal vision of the organization. Uh, expected long term and uh, short term and long term results. Benefits from the projects, problem resolved by the project. This is basically uh, the background. It has to talk about the elements, define the problem. Um, talk about sort of vision what is it that in society that the that the organization project is trying to solve what are the short term what are the long term results of the uh, of the project uh, who are the beneficiaries of the project and what problem will be resolved in society after the project has been implemented the second is the content of the project gives you the theme the main issues to be covered the method chosen uh, the goals, objectives, activities to be implemented, further needs to, further needs to be continued by the project. What the project needs to uh, do, what in society is the added value of the project. Project location and time schedule activities. Uh, you have to also state where the project will be implemented. Uh, is it district, regional, national, international? What's the duration of the project? When does the project start? When does it end? What are the schedules of every activities? You have an activity plan of what tells you when are you going to be, what activity? You have a summarized outlet of uh, out, timeline of the project which gives you what activity will be done at what time and what will be done at what time. 
Uh, number four, resources. These are human, financial, infrastructure. As I said earlier on, you've got material, you've got uh, human, you've got uh, tangible, intangible resources, you've got uh, movable, non-movable, and movable resources, as I said earlier. Uh, the other thing is the cost and income sources. What is the total budget of a project, detailed budget by activity and cost types, rate and form of uh, contribution, who is going to contribute what to the project, how much is the own contribution, who are the potential funders and what are the sources of this funding. Uh, the description of the implementing organization. This is very important, but it gives you what kind, what is the name of the organization, where is it located, and gives analysis of the capacity and capability of the organization. Descri describes the partners who is going to uh, partner with the organization in implementing the project. Also gives uh, an analysis of the uh, capabilities of the partners or the uh, added. Uh, uh, capacity in terms of consultancy, consultants in terms of uh, technical capacity that will be gotten and is needed. Um, seven, the project team and management. It talks about who's going to coordinate the project, how the communication will be done, and what will be the team formulation. What is the community strategy? What is the internal environment and external environment that? The, organization, the project will be implemented in and how are these interlinked and how is information gotten. Number eight is monitoring and evaluation follow-up. Uh, this talks about the success factors of the, of the project. What, will, what are the success factors of the project? What will come out? What methodology of monitoring? How will be the monitoring done? And uh, what tools are going to be done? There are various tools for monitoring and evaluating but uh, you should stipulate in what kind of uh, tools you're going to use. However, for organization to note, it is important for us to note that uh, at this stage, if, if one is careful, reads through various proposals and understands various proposals, the way they're written, it would be very easy for them to understand that they are, the formats are the same. They might have elements switched, uh, switched in the format, but every element, exists and uh, uh, that exists from the conventional format exists and uh, it's easy to write a proposal after you've read through and you understand uh, what is happening um the other challenge is about solicited and unsolicited proposals most of the times uh, solicited proposals are given and driven by the donors it's quite hard for you to come up with uh, your own idea but uh, uh, so these proposals are almost common because they are easily funded because the donor is driving them. They've given the format, and the other challenge is on unsolicited proposals. And solicited proposals are proposals from which which are drawn by the uh, organization itself and knows the idea at once. Now wants to sell the idea to the donor. This is very difficult to sell, but it is very good for us because it addresses the actual problem being faced by the organization and it is driven by the organization itself therefore before sending and solicit a proposal writing one you have to do a proposal intent letter or inquiry letter to find out if uh, the donor would be interested so you do like a concept note but this is a one page letter which gives you a summary of the idea you want to be funded and you check it to the donor if they accept they can fund that's when you start working on a proposal uh, what is a project proposal a project proposal is a detailed description of a series of activities aimed at solving a certain problem. And I repeat, aimed at solving a certain problem. As I said earlier, a problem, the problem will go throughout the training that we're doing here because it is the basis for a proposal, the basis for any fundraising, the basis for any resource mobilization. The proposal should contain detailed explanation of the justification of the project. Why do you want the project to be done? What is the rationale? Uh, why do you intend? What problem do you want to solve? Then the activities to be the activities to be implemented, <clears throat> the time that they're going to be implemented, the methodology that will be used in implementing the project. It has to state their resources. As we doing the resource mobilization, it has to state the resources, uh, human, material, financial, that are required to uh, attain or achieve the project. Um, 
what does an organization need to do before embarking on a proposal it is very important for an organization to understand uh, to undertake simple research before embarking on a proposal as to understand the following you undertake a simple research that is uh, tailored to solicit views from the uh, community from experts from uh, donors from uh, other peer organizations and from experts on the same field uh, on the following which are the most appropriate funders for your project who is likely to fund your project check the internet directories and other categories to find out who are the possible funders that can fund your organization you also scan your environment to find out who has possibly and who has funded such projects before obtain their guidelines and find out procedures guidelines and application forms to see how they want the proposals to be written therefore you will have to understand how these guidelines appeal and how you're going to uh, uh, work on the guidelines and the other thing is determine if if the kind of resources you're looking for are provided by these organizations because you might look for resources that are not provided by that organization despite you doing a good proposal in the application and uh, that is, uh, what is usual the amount that is based by the applicant it's also to understand the how much is given by the applicant most organizations in Tanzania uh, give most foundations and funders give uh, no more than a hundred thousand a hundred thousand dollars uh, so you have to understand if you want to have a 200 300 400 thousand 500 project uh, you should see that uh, you look for donors that can give that kind of amount huh? and you also have to know whether they support the kind of project that you want similar projects who has in the past gotten kind of funding from these donors to a related project make sure they provide the projects you you want and in the regions you want to implement uh, you might find that uh, certain donors work in certain regions certain uh, provinces or certain certain districts therefore you have to understand the uh, district in which they work uh, you also have to network with donors to have create rapport so that it's easy for you to ask them questions and find out what kind of proposal fits their mission because every organization that gives money the money is given according to their mission it has to advance their mission as i said earlier on even before proposal writing i talked in the uh, preamble that you have to understand the mission and vision of the organization that's given money so that you find out what kind of person advances their cause uh what types of funding are available for ngos uh before you start fundraising proposal writing you should understand that there are these kinds of uh, uh, funds available as written below you have a project grant support for specific projects these are project grants they support specific projects operating grant provides operational expenses only for the project for specific projects and does not cover any other institutional support you've got challenge grant provides uh, challenge grant provided only if the applicant secured matching grant meaning that you have to look from other sources or own sources some funding before you can get a challenge grant you got technical assistance this can be in kind in cash or skills or development uh, the donor might give you the skills in terms of maybe fundraising in terms of operations in terms of advocacy uh, but uh, you don't get the actual money you get the technical assistance um, the fifth is the fellowship these are given to individuals for educational purposes and you've got price uh, award, awards and prizes they are given to competitive basis widening uh, rewarding accomplishments and achievements these are given to people who have done excellent work and they now uh, are being awarded or rewarded for the good work they've done in the various fields uh, and, and uh, it is also important that to understand the format of the proposals um, what is project design and how does it relate to the proposal writing the project design is one phase of the project cycle it consists of two elements the first element is project planning formulation of project elements and the second one is project proposal writing converting the plan into a project document the project design is a result of both 
project planning and the project proposal. Both steps are essential for, for forming a solid project. Meaning that all work has to be done in designing how the project will be, what elements will go into the project, what are the outputs, what are the uh, inputs. And the final is writing the actual project, putting it together, assembling it in a project format, which has to be done uh, in sequence. You start by uh, identifying the uh, resources, the activities, the outputs, whatever, start uh, from the problem, and then you come to the actual writing or converting these uh, these project uh, proposed plans or uh, project plans into a corrigible proposal, which is a document uh, which follows a certain format, might be a donor given format, but be the conventional format, which is explained uh, at length in this uh, training. What is project planning? Um, beneficiaries of the project have to be said and analyzed as you do project planning who is going to benefit how and in what kind of quantity quality they are going to benefit second you have to define the project team and the cooperative partners who has the capacity skills whose skills capacity will be using the project and whose resources or partners are going to give uh, support to the project in terms of financial resource material technical support uh, you should also define the project success criteria. You say what will be the, uh, what will, how will the success look like? What will be the elements we are going to use to measure success? Uh, then you have to define the project goals. What is the main aim of the project? And what are the objectives? Uh, objectives must not be very many, uh, but they should all work towards achieving the goal which has been identified uh, you should choose a methodology that will help you achieve the project goal you should also look at the course analyze the course and expenditures that will go in the project work then uh, and the cost of expenditures that go in the project and on contribution, the potential funders that will fund your project. It's important to do this in the project planning. How does organization write a project proposal? Despite there being a variety of formats, application forms, project design outlines, the grant application guidelines, other common there are other common elements within the proposal. In essence, you write a proposal by trying to persuade the reader to do something make the reader believe the solution is practical and appropriate therefore any proposal offers a plan to fill in a need fulfill a need and the reader will evaluate your plan according to how well you have written it the present the present presentation to answer the following questions what I'm trying to say here is that when you write a proposal, despite there being very many formats and uh, outlines, application guidelines, but there are common elements, as I said earlier, in all the proposals. And in essence, a proposal should be persuasive. Try to make the reader who is the donor do something and bring something is give you the money or the finance needed to uh, finance a project. But it has to answer the following questions. What are you proposing? What is it that you're going to do which is unique and which is going to add value to the work of the sector or in uh, relation to solving a certain problem? How do you plan to do this work? When do you do when do you plan to do this? How much is going how much is it going to cost you to do this kind of work? It is very important to answer the four questions when you're doing a proposal. Um Uh, proposal organization background yes we have seen a lot of proposals but all proposals are, are written by organizations and it is the organization that identify the background so the, the problem therefore you have to have an understanding of what is the background of the organization that's going to implement the proposal what information exists about the organization 
what other work has in sim similar work or related work has been done by the organization therefore it is important for the person doing the proposal to read through past reports of the organization so as to understand the organization very well and write relevant information it is not it, it is often that organization write uh, just paste the background they don't do a check on what has changed in the organization what is new and what can be done better from what they've done in the past therefore it is important to do a research to understand the beneficiaries the donors and how the donors would like your organization to position itself for them to give you the funds so it is important to do an organizational check to see uh, how you stand as an organization and present a good picture of the organization which is the current picture not the uh, the past picture of the organization so it should be seen that the organization has grown the organization has changed it is well postured to implement this program like more than the other programs so it is very important not just to cut and paste what you got from a previous proposal or organizational background you have to do a clear check um the useful tools in proposal writing are sort and lastly pastel sort analysis too comes handy here when we sit with our colleagues and find out the strengths weaknesses opportunities of the organization once this framework is ready it is it will be quite easy for us to write a proposal answer the sharp questions of any proposal so you do the sort of analysis it's a reflection of who we are where we are right now what what are our weaknesses what are our strengths what are capabilities what opportunities uh, exist and we can also do a pastel which also includes the social economic aspects of the environment in which the organization uh, uh, is postured so you also talk about the political elements of the uh, where the organization is postured uh, all these tools have been uh, outlined in a, in a later chapter or in uh, other books of how you go conducting this kind of analysis you also have to look at the effect problem cause uh, uh, linkages when you're doing a proposal as I said earlier on it is very important for you to understand what is the effect of the problem what is the actual problem what are the causes uh, so it is important for you to do this kind of analysis and mostly of time to use the problem tree which uh, gives you this kind of relationship of the three factors um, you also can use uh, a continuum of uh, asking why 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 as is outlined below The why why the project evolves out of identified problems it is the problem that comes before the project as i asked the question earlier on if you remember in the opening i was asking which one comes first the project the problem a project write-up and uh, it is a problem that comes first and as i said earlier on uh, uh, the secret of solving a problem is proper identification of a problem it requires uh, thorough investigation of the problem to see what is the actual problem not the offshoots of a problem or the under the causes of a problem but what is the actual problem problem does not happen in isolation it goes hand with causes and effects therefore you have to understand what are the causes and what are the effects and what is the actual problem you do this analysis and um, this has been discussed in a letter in, a, in another manual where we have uh, done this kind of analysis of how you do the cause and effect uh, and how they are linked to the problem so we will refer to you to that uh, to the to the other manual which is um, on uh, which is on um, problem problem analysis through cause and effect state the problem as effectively and precisely as possible refer to any research data available as i said earlier you have to do data research uh, publication reports newspapers and any other and you go to some other empirical data bodies like uh, nbs which will give you information on the relevant uh, relevant to the organ to, to the problem you want to solve give a narration of the community perspective of of the problem quote 
how affected are the communities by this problem. Therefore, it gives uh, the donor an understanding of how immense or uh, intense the, uh, the, the problem is. Check back how well it matches with the donor guidelines. Yes, when you're doing analysis, find out what the guidelines that the donor has given. How well does your problem analysis answer the problems or the, the uh, answer the, uh, the, the, the needs of the donor? What elements of your problem analysis are really linked to what the donor wants? It's very important to understand that. Give a thorough background information about the region in which you're working, community and resources available for the project. It is very important to show that you need this money because you're short of resources, but you should also show certain uh, advantages you have in terms of, uh, of uh, maybe skills, in terms of understanding your problem, in terms of reach to their community, in terms of uh, uh, political acceptability, all these elements. Uh, uh, though you might not have money, but you can give the comparative advantage you have and what is your niche in terms of uh, the problem. Explain the organization's strength, capacity uh, in countering the problem and achieving a long-term results of uh, long-term results as uh, is uh, 